I reloaded. I can't All right. figure out. And we are back. Welcome back, everybody, for hour two of Lost Initiative of Star Wars The Forgotten. We are in the middle of fighting in a, in a, in a fire spray ship against our captors right now. And that's kind of just where we are. So, um, like I said, as we left off, we had the one guy kind of locked himself in the cell seeing this big Wookiee, which he was clearly afraid of going into this thing, even if the Wookiee wasn't uh, aware of it beforehand. So he locked himself in the cell. He's got his back to the wall. He's got the blaster there ready to uh, fire anybody who tries to open the cell. You have uh, Mathis um, kind of bleeding from this uh, uh, blaster wound over here. I mean, like just the scarring and everything already starting to form around it. Um, uh, at the end of the hallway, you have the Wookiee, who's very happy with himself holding these two arms. <laughs> they ripped off the human, and um, uh, the poor Bothan, who's locked in the other cell, like, ah, damn it, well, at least I didn't have to kill anybody. Um, and uh, one of the things that I'm going to say that um, uh, Warbisher notices is that, like, throughout this whole thing, you kind of are a little impressed with the fact that this scrawny little human over here, he didn't flinch. Like, he literally ran out into the middle of blaster fire, started working on this droid, and didn't flinch. He just kept doing it. Like, screw it. I did whimper. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> you, you, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, are we still in initiative? Uh, no, initiative doesn't really matter. Well, yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point because there's a combat going on um, beyond your scope at the moment, and then this guy is locked in the cell waiting for somebody's head to kind of bobble by. All right, um, well, he's in the cell across from me, right? Exactly that, I yes. But he's not just going to blast at you or anything. Go ahead. Okay, I want to convince him to toss his blaster towards me. Um, absolutely. You can um, roll your coercion. Um, I'm going to tell you that it is going to be five purple. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. That is a um, lot of purple. I don't even think just, I can beat that. You saw that your friend ripped the arms off of his friends. Um, okay, I guess my coercion is going to be, if you, um, if you toss that blaster this way, I'll make sure he doesn't hurt you. If you don't, I'll let him in. I'll let him in. I will, uh, downgrade that to three purple because okay. of the new angle. Three purple, still not easy. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, oh God. Hey! Hey! Hey, that's, that's, wow, okay. Um, so, yeah, he, you say that to him, and he's, like, like, uh, fighting with himself over it for a long period of time, and he's like, I don't, uh, and then it's like, you can totally tell every fiber in his being is telling him he should not do this. He should not do this. Weapon upgrade hype! <laughs> and, and he walks over to the, to the edge of the cell, and he kind of, like, reaches the blaster through and drops it. Oh, so it's on the floor in front of his cell? Exactly. Oh, well, he can't exactly hand it to, to... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, like, I'll peek up from, like, working on this droid. I'll kind of, like, look at the Wookiee, then just look back at the gun, and then go back to working on the droid. Absolutely. Uh, Warbo, noticing this guy has given up his gun, realizes he is in the same cells that have a different artificial gravity uh, control panel. So he immediately mashes the one that guy is in, removing all the gravity in that guy's cell. Oh jeez. Um, <laughs> when I when I see Warbo, are you still holding the arms of the other dude? I've I've dropped them. Please, <laughs> uh, the bit's over. I'm a Wookiee comedian <laughs> apparently, and I've dropped them. Leave them while they're laughing, and I tip my hat and walked off the ship. No, I saw, I'm, but I'm, I could but I could see the hand thing, right? I could see the ar the arms. Oh yeah, no, I did it for you guys to see. That's why he was like, "Look, okay. it, look how funny this is." When I see when I finally get uh, when I see you, I'm like. Well, are you going to let me out? And also, do you really have to do that? <laughs> Meanwhile, the other guy's floating around in his cell like, oh, no. <laughs> Hey, at least he's alive. <laughs> yeah, he is alive, floating in his cell, uh, very uh, worried right now. And uh, Mathis, why don't you roll me your mechanics check to boot up this uh, this Still with three purple? Same roll, sir. Damn. All right. You still have your, uh, you actually can go with uh, two boosts now because of how many uh, advantages you keep getting. Okay. Hey. Hey. There we go. 
So uh, you're sitting there and as you're working on this thing and you're starting to get it booted up and, and you're finally getting everything functioning, you're actually able to repair a little bit of the damage that was done to it. Like, oh, this board's fried and like kind of toss another one in there. Um, so as the thing boots back up, it actually has only taken um, uh, minimal damage to the point where don't worry about a Krendor. So the thing actually starts booting up and... <laughs> uh, yeah. So like, you can probably see me messing with the wires, like you said, replacing the fried boards, and eventually I kind of just stand up, and I kind of just like, this thing should be working, and I just like, kick it, and then it just like, starts like, booting up. And I'm like, ah, I knew it! And I'll walk up front. Red, red, red. <laughs> Roger. Uh, so... I, 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 were you like in your little like hunched over for me? You like mur, 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 Sandra's mur. been waiting for hours. I've been Just waiting for that moment for hours. Do you so like as you kind of boot up um, and your your li li eyes like flicker on? I'll kind of yeah. like tap you at the front and be like, "Do you under do you understand me?" Yeah, my voice is still kind of wonky, but I'm just like red, 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 red. <laughs> so I kind of like bonk it, like ah, good enough. To, can you fight? Yeah. God. Um, so as you go looking around for a weapon, I imagine the, the droid kind of mimicking you starts uh, looking around for a weapon too. So like I said, you do see a bunch of things uh, kind of strewn about. Um, uh, one of the more telltale things is again, as that kind of everything rebooted and the magnetic seals uh, released, a compartment over by where you're standing opened up and you can see your own personal stuff inside there. There are a few other compartments that are over next to it, like little, like, um, you can imagine, like, little locker holds, but the doors are open for them, so there's a bunch of stuff in that area. However, uh, Krendor, uh, no scope actually sees, or sorry, what are we calling them? 420? 420? 420 for short. Yeah, 420, all right. So 420 is, um, oh, looks around, and he actually sees his own personal blaster rifle lying amongst the junk that's on the table that you're uh, kind of, like, half on, half off. I, uh, I see it, and I'm like, oh, there it is. And then I just pick it up. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, it seems like I was just using this yesterday. <laughs> uh, Mathis, you see the, 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 the blaster he was picking up? You noticed it as you were going about and doing your things. You actually took, like, two parts from that thing. Uh, that thing is a little beat up and definitely needs to be repaired. Um, there might be enough parts around here to get the job done, but for now, it's, it's a wonderful-looking stick to beat somebody with. Um, but like I said, you do see other supplies around. All right, uh, I'll kind of, as you reach for the gun, I'll be like, uh, I need to, I, I, I need to fix that first. It's not going to work. Well, I like, just look at it and I start like, like, no, nah, no, nah, it's fine. And then I like pull the trigger. It's see, like, <laughs> and, um, based off of where and how you see it frying, you can immediately tell your job just got a little bit harder. I'll, I'll reach forward and be like, no, 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 I'll fix it, I'll fix it, just d take this, and I'll just reach for another weapon from the compartment, one of theirs, if they have one, I don't know, whatever's closest. Did the, any of you have, like, a pistol? Yep. I, I did have a pistol, so... So if that's in there, like... I a pistol that he threw underneath the thing, the heavy pistol. Oh, yeah, there is a pistol right on the floor, so I'll reach for the one on the floor that he dropped, I'll pick no, that up. No, don't use that one, I want that one. And I, I'm just handing it, I hand it to the droid. <laughs> I like you use this for now. I just this needs to be fixed. Uh, I'm I'm okay. She's okay, and the Wookie's okay. Roger, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> so looking around, uh, Krendor, what you uh, looking around and kind of like analyzing what you see, you kind of see that there is a Bothan over in that thing. And Bothan, you know, generally non-combative, not a threat. Uh, you see the one that put you together, and so you're like, oh, this one repaired me. Useful um human typically not a threat and you see the wookie across from you and kind of like the threat level goes on like high alert like uh wookie high threat wookie high threat wookie high threat and it's kind of like looking at you as you're looking at it but it doesn't seem to be combative it has no weapons it has nothing other than uh, blood all over it so maybe it's injured i uh i take my new weapon and i aim it at him and i'm like is this one with you the, the, the Wookiee is yet. Yeah, the Wookiee is with me. Is he friendly? <laughs> I take a minute. Yes, yes, he's friendly. I've seen a few non-friendly Wookiees in my day. <laughs> I, I'm just like, just leave him alone. Just leave him alone. Roger, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, oh, that's so funny. Uh... <laughs> 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 
I just put the gun down. Well, I hang on to it. Yeah, yeah, hang on yeah. to it. Warbo completely ignores this thing. Completely, <laughs> and totally ignores it, and goes over to the new locker that just opened up and pulls out his nice badass vibro axe and ginormous bowcaster and just straps him on with his like Wookie bandolier that's also in there and just wait did you leave me in the cell did you not open the cell yet i asked you I to believe, open the cell. i believe i said what i did and what i did was go <laughs> get my weapons put everything back on and that's what i did <laughs> excuse me uh, in in incoming data, uh, Wookiee threat level just uh, quintupled. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he, is, he is far more dangerous than he was beforehand. Uh, you have uh, various alerts and alarms going off. <laughs> uh, now that we're all together and everybody's awake, I'm going to go through the characters. I'm just going to show off the characters themselves. Feel free to describe sure. what you look like. Uh, we'll start with Maggie's character, and I'm going to pop that up right now. And Maggie, what does your character look like as I pop everything up? Okay. Um... So my character's a Bothan, so she's kind of like a canine, feline-looking creature with kind of like a horse. I don't know. It's a, it's a conglomeration of mammal mammalian anthropod character. Um, and then she has, like, golden hair, and it's pretty long. I don't know if you can tell in the photo, but I think uh, the artist did kind of put, like, a little bit of extra hair down the bottom on the other side. Uh, she has, like, a headpiece thing in her hair that matches her outfit and she's wearing like red robes with um, like red and gold coloring um, to match her family colors. All right. You're so, you're so balanced. Your stats are so balanced. <laughs> yeah, they're I good. Know. She's uh, more, like I said, she's like a, I don't know. She's much more balanced cares than, than you guys are. She, and she's not combat combative. She's more right. like a charming and coercion type of thing works uh krendor hit me with what your character looks like who yes. you are uh i am a b1 battle droid very strong very old very powerful very old and wise <laughs> none, of those uh, <laughs> none of those things uh i got a cool little like shoulder cape uh which is pretty neat and uh, aside from that i got some like green war paint type stuff and my giant ass gun and i'm very agile I am so agile that I could play running back in the NFL very easily. <laughs> uh, uh, now, everything else, not very good at it. Maybe I can brawl occasionally, but, you know, who needs that when you're a bounty hunter assassin with crazy agility, right? That's what you hope for anyway. And yeah. besides, for Melee, we've got Jesse. Jesse, what does your character look like? Okay, so imagine the biggest, most badass, red, brownish, furred Wookiee you've ever seen in your life. Uh, he's got patches where he has no fur because he's been scarred there, and he's got a little tiny boop under his under his chin because that's just who he is. Uh, you'll notice he is a badass character. Um, turns out, he also has a problem. In order to get such amazing stats, he also uh, unfortunately has a drug problem. <laughs> he loves... He loves spice. He, uh, at any given time, I believe at, at the start of this, I already have, uh, let me look. So I believe 16, I have 16 <laughs> doses of Avamu spice in a calm link. So he is an addict. Do and that you? might be the reason why we were in a jail cell. You know. No comment. I have no comment on that. You can't <laughs> pin it on me. You can't <laughs> pin it on me. So he is, his willpower is very, very low, and uh, his addiction to spice might get him into trouble. <laughs> awesome. And then finally, we have uh, my character, Fitz. He is a human. Uh, he's very, he's relatively tall, but he's very lanky. He does not have, like, much muscular build at all. Uh, he's kind of got this awkward look about him. His hair is a mess. Uh, he looks not relatively clean-shaven. Um, and when he moves, he's very, like, twitchy. He seems very nervous. Uh, he seems to be more comfortable working on machines than talking to other people. Uh, and that is, he's a technician mechanic as a specialty. How tall is your character? You said he's really tall. Yeah, but he's like 6'1", six, 6'2"-ish. Six, he's pretty tall. Okay, yeah. Like I'm 4'5", four five, five, just so you guys know. I'm a, I'm a tiny thing. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. how tall is the Wookiee? Just the so bot can... might be taller than me. <laughs> uh, I actually wrote this down because I was, he is 7 feet tall. 
Okay, so you are you are massive. You make you make um uh, the fits look small. Okay. Yeah. How tall are you, is your character, Krendor? I don't know. How tall are B one battle <laughs> droids? They look like average, like human-ish height. I think. Yeah, you're probably taller than me, actually. I am probably the shortest. One point nine three meters. Are you looking up how many meters are a feet? Are you <laughs> yes. <laughs> Six point two feet. <laughs> oh, so you're like as tall I as I am. That's like an average human. Yeah. Okay, right. awesome. So, so Maggie is by far the shortest one in the uh, in the crew. So you have a six foot, just over six foot, or both just over six feet. A seven footer, and another one. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so as you guys kind of like uh, look around the room and kind of gathering up, uh, the Botham was like, "Why is why is nobody?" Or Nareem was like, "What are you gonna let me out?" And what do you what do you do there, Jesse? Uh, I mean it. I guess we're off the initiative, so it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. yeah, I go over and I just sort of like open the cell mm -hmm. and, and give her this look of just like I have my priorities, weapons, you know. <laughs> that kind of yeah, I mean, if you did say that thing to me, I probably know what you're gonna. You're like, I'm gonna get my weapons first. And I'm like, well, eh, whatever. Not like I can do much anyway. Um, so we still have. Somebody piloting the ship that's so, so the, the threat is yeah. not over yet. The ship is still gets hit every once in a while, which right now it's kind of hilarious because as you guys are finishing your conversation, there is a smash against the ship, and you do hear the guy go ah, toof, toof, as he's kind of like flying around in the cell because he's in zero grav as the ship is being thrown about everywhere. So he's kind of getting smacked around uh, quite a bit. And um, there is the pilot themselves, so never mind what's going on outside the pilot themselves. Okay. I am gonna yeah. grab my weapon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make the guy's cell back to normal if I can, mm -hmm. if, I can if I can figure that out. Sure. Is it sure. something easy to figure out or? It, it, it is relatively easy for, uh, for you to figure this out, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna tell him, I'm gonna basically kind of ask him, who else is on oh, the ship? Actually, no, I'm sorry, that's wrong. No, you can't figure oh. it out. You you actually would have to make a mechanics check because our fun little Wookiee friends destroyed the console that would control that. <laughs> I, I look at that and I look at I look at Warbo and I'm like, you always have to, to beat everything up. Um, I'm gonna look over at Fitz and I'm like, Fitz, do you think you can fix this? Uh, like messing with the the rather large rifle, uh, I'll look over, put the rifle down, and be like, I kind of shrug my shoulders. I can try, and I'll like reach into the like the compartment and get my like my tools, and uh, I'll start walking over. I'll like walk over and, and start fiddling with well, it. Well, while you're fiddling with it, because the guy in the cell can still hear me, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna tell him I could have my friend stop the gravity, or I mean, I guess equalize the gravity. What, what how do you, would you call it? Fix it. Right? Generate, generate gravity. Yeah. yeah. Uh, generate the gravity back if you don't mind giving me some information. Please. <laughs> and I, I give uh, Fitz the nod. All right, and I'll, I'll um, just get to work. All right. Well, he's working on it while that's happening. Why don't you tell me who else is on the ship? Um, I will answer that one second, Maggie. Um, Crendor, does 420 do anything, or is he literally just kind of like motionlessly standing there, maybe just kind of like watching what other people are doing? Uh, I'm kind of slowly coming to again and like remembering stuff about the Great Clone War. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and I just look and see the door and I'm like, I can blast it open if you want. And I just, I start aiming at the door. Um, I, I, go, I, I, I see him aiming and I'm like, no, no. What is his name? Uh, I'm the robot's name. 420. 420? Yeah, I don't think he actually, he never even told you his designation, so you would just know him as a B-1 battle droid. Um, so as you kind of like reach out- Oh, I guess I'm saying no, no, what is your name? That's what I'm going to say. Oh, oh gosh, my apologies, go ahead. Krendor. Uh, my name is 420. <laughs> that's all I say. No, that's all I say. <laughs> that's all he says, that's all he says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all you say? Yeah. Um. I kind of, I guess there's no such thing. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just like, I look at him and I'm like, okay, 420. No, no, don't use the weapon. Actually, well, why not? Yes, prepare your weapon the other direction. If anyone comes this way, you shoot at them, all right? I'm like, uh, Roger, Roger. And I slowly turn around. 
As you're turning, you actually catch a glimpse of what it is that's flying around in the cell, and all you see is as a person flying around with bits and pieces, uh, though you can't entirely tell it's bits and pieces, you just see that there's a uh, clone warrior, uh, what is it, um, um, a clone uh, soldier armor on this person. Storm, stormtrooper? Just, yeah, thank you, stormtrooper armor. I don't know why, why I could have think stormtrooper so stormtrooper armor um uh, on there and all of a sudden you're kind of like your wires and your head starts to like go off the fritz for a moment as you had just said you're remembering bits and pieces from the clone wars and so you're like ah, enemy 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 as you see this uh this, this uh stormtrooper floating around in the cell and you know as a separatist that you need to destroy all the the clones so uh those kind of like start going off in your head you can choose to resist that if you would like However, um, uh, that is what's immediately coming to your programming. I see it, and I'm like, ah, destroy, and then I fire. Awesome. You're like, uh, <laughs> like <laughs> what do you call those things? <laughs> the Dalek? Da yeah, Dalek. <laughs> oh, the, da the, the Daleks? Yeah, the yeah. Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> You're writing, like, the voice me. So uh, let's walk him through this. Uh, how much, what's the difficulty, Scott, to hit this guy bouncing around? Um, it's uh, just going to be a one. Okay. So, do you know what you're so doing, Kendra? purple, you're going to up the one on it. They change the purple to one. Yeah. And then you're going to roll whatever your damage is. So it's a yeah, but you're going to be rolling a light-ranged weapon as opposed to a heavy range because this is a heavy blaster pistol, not to your rifle. So light, not heavy. Where do I change that? You know, you can go down to your skills. Under combat skills, you see range dash light. Uh, combat skills. I don't see any combat skills. It's pretty low. Yeah, yeah scroll so, all the way down. Um, so you have on character info, there's a skills tab right underneath your soak. He is on his skills tab, yep. Okay, and then scroll all, all the way the down way and keep going past general, all the way down to combat skills. He may not have been. My apologies. There we go. Now you're on your skills tab. I just did uh, for you. There it is. There you go. All right. There you uh, go. And then you just click the the D twenty button all the way to the right of the ranged light. Hold on, don't click it yet. I'll apply those uh, two sorry the one uh, difficulty on there for you. I thought he and, already did it. No, uh, he did not. It is now there. Okay. Uh, oh okay. my god! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my god! Get out of town with that! Oh Jesus. my god! Oh my god! That's What did you do? What? <laughs> Oh my god, okay. How so, is your range light that high? <laughs> oh my god. You remember we made him like a death bot. He is like a killing fucking machine. He's a I'm like... cannon. If he gets hit, he's dead. <laughs> but yeah, but he can't get hit. Yeah. <laughs> Between the two of you, everything's just gonna get murdered. Ridiculous! I imagine, oh it to, I imagine it was not set to stun, was it? No, no, no. no, no, no. That's 11 points of damage. You one shot at this guy. You know, you go right through his soak, right through his health, and you one shot at this guy. So you're just kind of like, uh, you uh, play it yourself, but you line up your shot and literally just one blast. Wait, which guy is he shooting at? The guy that was floating around in the thing. No, I told him to not to shoot at that, not to shoot at the he guy did? that we were talking yeah, he, to. He, 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 he saw him go nuts. Like and PTSD. <laughs> Yeah, he saw yeah, the, he saw the storm it. the stormtrooper armor, recognized it as clone trooper armor, and it went like it raised his threat level, and he just he oh, like reflexed. Oh, okay. Because I was so confused, I thought he was shooting at something else, and so I'm like, what is what? No, he killed him. So I'm like destroyed, and then I just kind of go back to normal. I like as the the blaster fire blasts in, he clearly gets shot. I jump back from the uh, the panel I was working on, take a minute, put my tools it's not away. Much for knowing knowing how many people on this ship. And I turn back and I'm like, I thought I told you not to shoot. Well, uh, I don't know what happened. I just wanted to shoot and I shot. I detected danger. Something's wrong with that thing. You better get it under control. I look at the pits and I say that to him. I, I wow. look, I shake my, my head and I get back to go back to like getting my tools back together. <laughs> I'm going to go look for my blaster. I get my, my, my blaster and find that. Absolutely, you find all of your supplies or anything that was yours. Um, uh, sans the credits, those are separated, but you're going to find them in a stash together that you guys are going to separate later on anyways. But so um, you find everything that's on your credits all in these little cubby holes of where they had put things. So okay, I look I'm to grab all my stuff, put mm -hmm. things in pouches, put, pull my dress or like my uh, whatever robe up and put the pistol in there and um, 
I'm going to look at uh, Fitz. If he's still tinkering with stuff, I'm like, how much time do you need with that? Uh, I went back to working on his his blaster. Uh, like, if I – a quick estimate, Scott. Like, if I look at the – like, looking at this. So much time has passed. Why don't you roll me a, uh, a mechanics check to see if you put that together? Difficulty uh, of – Once again, because this thing is uh, beat up, you're rolling with a three difficulty. All right, but no more booster dice, correct? Uh, no booster dice. Yeah. You have not um, set yourself up for this. Success and an advantage. Okay, there you go. Um, so you actually are able to uh, put it together. And um, honestly, looking at the job that you did, put it together, you don't need to take back the parts that you had in the droid in the first place. You were able to kind of like reroute things to be a little bit more efficient. And it's kind of like, it's ready. As, yeah, as, as you, so as you ask, and I'm just finishing up, it'll you'll hear it power up, and then I'll walk over to uh, 420. I'll, I'll take the pistol out of your hand and put the gun, your rifle back in yours and say, I'm all done. All right, good timing, because we need to get out of here. Um, I'm going to look around the corner. I'm going to look at Warbo, and I'm like, want to lead us? Uh, question. Mm -hmm. Where can we get out of here to? There's only one door out, right? We're in yep. Okay, okay, sorry. Yep, you are in space. There is only one door out. That door leads two directions. Uh, sorry, well, it leads out to, onto a little platform where those seats are, so you can look out and watch the battles in the glass and, and see your ship slowly getting destroyed. Um, and you can also see that there's a ladder immediately to your side on the wall, like right there, that goes up to where the pilot is or down below to where the uh, uh, ship's mechanics are, or at least some of the ship's mechanics down below. Can, can we tell, because you mentioned this pilot, was it the enemy pilot or our pilot that was good? He said our pilot was good. So can we tell how good this pilot is? I mean, you're watching, you can see that he is maneuvering around and doing very well at combating this uh, uh, the ship that they're fighting. Um, however, your ship is taking quite a few hits. You can hear like little alarms and whatnot going off. You can see like little areas where like kind of like smoke starting to like as pipes are breaking. So while the pilot has done well enough to stay alive, they haven't been able to get themselves clear enough to jump into light speed to escape or to disable the ship that they were fighting or anything like that. Good, but not good enough. Okay, so, uh, I, I would think that based off that information, we should, one, try to get Mathis down into the uh, engine room, mechanically, maybe come up with a way to get the hyperdrive either, like, on or working or give us more speed or something, you know, Scotty the thing, and, um, I don't know, can any of us fly better than this guy? Because I certainly can't. I can't. I definitely can't. Um, yeah, so maybe we could coerce him into... I, I, here's here's, here's um, my suggestion. Don't even talk to this dude. Let, he, he, let him worry about the fight. If we show up in the middle of a fight, that dude's gonna be like, huh? And then <laughs> we're all dead. That's true. That's very true. So, That's true. If we okay, don't open um, that door, he won't know what's going on down below, so we don't have to worry until the fight's over. So all we have to do is make it so this ship can outrun the enemy ship. I mm -hmm. can pilot. I'm a very FTL good pilot. style. Very true. Um, <laughs> that's true. He, out I mean, of all of us, the B one is the pilot. Let's be honest. But we're not gonna. We don't want to. No, oh my God, this guy. If we go up there, we're gonna be. We're gonna. No, no, no. Honest. I agree. I agree. I, no, I'm in a complete agreement with you. So basically, Werbo and I are having this conversation <laughs> with each other. <laughs> um, all it is is conversation. Uh, I look. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I look over at Fitz and I'm like, well. What do you think about helping this guy out and fixing the ship up? Just point me to the engine room and that's where I'll go. Um, I look at the B1, maybe he's seen a ship, like, how new is my, our ship in comparison? Would he like kind of maybe know the floor, the plans, the floor plan? Oh, well, you, it was very obvious that when you kind of came around and you looked up and you looked down that pilot was up and uh, mechanics are down. It was, right. there was, it was pretty obvious. I mean, uh, not everything is down there. A lot of systems are going to be like off to the sides and all over the place, but definitely the, the heavier part of the engine is going to be down below. So like having my tool bag on my, on my slung over again, I'll just immediately like with a, with a skip to my step, like start scurrying to the engine room as fast as I can. So making your way uh, down that ladder down there. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so I guess we give you cover. Okay. Um, one of the things, I mean, the ship is rather small, so it's very likely the only other person left on this ship is the pilot themselves um, because the area above you is not very large. Now, the space between, like, say, if you're standing on that platform, um, the space between where um, you were standing and where that guy is very likely sitting is... Uh, 15 feet, you know, going through the, the ceiling, maybe 15 feet, and there's a ladder, so a little bit 
larger, I guess. It's, it's not very big. And this person clearly heard blaster fire. That blaster fire stopped. And after a long period of time, of the blaster fire not stopping, he continues to hear a, a Wookiee's voice. So it's very likely that they kind of already know what's going on. Um, uh, this is something that you kind of all are able to put together with your um, various, like, kind of like analyzing the situation. And, but Mathis, or sorry, um, Fitz is just immediately hopping on the ladder and kind of climbing down and looking for what sounds or, or smells the most broken. He just kind of like <laughs> dives into it and pulls out his you know, gears and starts working. Uh, what do the three of you do while you're um, kind of like... I'm going to point uh, 420 over to um, Fitz and I'm going to be like, why don't you help him out? You're just going to ignore me? <laughs> Who are you talking? I don't think that Crendel realizes that he's 14. She's talking to Mathis. No, no. I said 14 zero. I said 14 zero. You're like, I point him over to Mathis. I'm like, why don't you help him out? That's what I thought you'd say. Oh, all right. No, no. You go help him, is what she said. Yeah. Oh, I said, I said okay. 14 zero, and I, and I pointed See, now, at robot. <laughs> Listen, I've just woken up, all right? Uh, <laughs> roger, roger. <laughs> And I just walk over to walk over to Fitz. Okay. And so I'm we're just like, "Hello, do you need help?" <laughs> I'm just standing directly in front of what it was that you were working on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I like push you off the side. I'm like, I wouldn't mind it as I'm like messing with uh with things. Uh, so you guys have in your handouts, uh, if you guys are looking to help, um, there's a starship cheat sheet. Pop that open. You can look at all the actions you can do. Um. If there's a computer terminals near that by that you maybe you can access and stuff. I'm just gonna show it to you guys to make it a little bit easier in case somebody's having a hard time finding it, and then bam, it should be right there for you. Um, <clears throat> these are the different actions that you can do, uh, or the different maneuvers or actions that can be done on the cheat sheet. Um, there are some that can be done um, by the non-pilot, some that can be done by the pilot only. But uh, don't worry about that necessarily at the moment. Uh, really what you're, because there's only one enemy against this one, it's really kind of a dogfight with just these two uh, going at each other. Uh, what Krendor is immediately going to be able to do is provide a boost die to Mathis, who is going to continue doing mechanics checks. The two of you, I suppose, can kind of just hold out right here for a moment to wait for an opportunity to do something. So, um, Mathis, your immediate goal, I believe, was to try to... Um, I mean, we're just trying to help this guy for the most part, so... You're trying to fix it. Actually, uh, are either of you uh, capable of doing astrogation? Um, Maggie or, or, uh, yeah, yeah. Jesse? No. Jesse. Well, I knew who it was, but yeah. No, you're not doing it. His face said no. I'm not sure. Astrogation? Mm hmm Uh, you Wait. don't, I have two green. You don't want that for me, necessarily. I mean, I have two int. Yeah, Here, so you. So do I. Here, here's what we can do. But... Maggie, if we work together, I can give you one blue die. It's not mm -hmm. great, but you'll have two green and one blue. Yeah. That's true. So one of the things that you guys can try to do if you're looking to assist, if all you're trying to do is look to assist, you can try to slice into the computer um, and it's kind of like uh, work the astrogation up there from down here, like trying to like uh, wire yourself into that terminal up there so you're not standing next to the guy and just start trying to plot a course to somewhere that's safe from around here. So at least like computing is being done while this person's attention is doing something else. Yeah, I'm down. Kind of that. I can okay. try. I'm Go nuts, right. kid. Go nuts. So I guess the only thing I'm going to do while I'm down here is attempt to boost shields and whatnot to keep him as safe as I can. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so why don't you roll that um, that mechanics check for me with the boost die that Krendor offers you. Okay. So boosting shields is a three difficulty. So here we go. All advantages. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, um... The, the the good news is you're able to reroute. Um, so the you're talking about boosting shields, yes. Yeah. So one of the things that you notice as you went in there is there was no shields. Like the shields are are down now. There's usually um, uh, two to manipulate. Their shields are completely down. So what you were able to do is kind of like find like a little reserve of power over an area that doesn't matter right now. You know the prison block, and um, and pull that power into like a, an area where you can use it. But you weren't able to route that power to where it needs to go. Okay. So um, you're still gonna have to try again to to get that successful. Yeah. Um, so for those in for, for everyone in chat who literally lost their minds when they saw that roll, <laughs> that's a really it's not a good roll. No, it's like, not. He, he did nothing. It's, more, it's but Really, really, kind of yeah. do okay. <laughs> <laughs> Most, okay. 
He's like, well, I see some things that I could have done that turn, but I guess I can't. Like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Lots exactly. Of so uh, if you two are going to try to slice your way into uh, the terminal upstairs, what you're going to have to do is roll. It's a computer's check from the mm -hmm. terminal down here. Not, not the one the Wookiee broke. One okay. Of the yeah. Oh, one of the other ones. Actually, the one that the, 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 it was in front of where the guards area is. There was a few little terminals set up right there. You're going to go over to one of them and try to, like, wire it through. Okay. So um, who is the better computers of the two of you? Uh, computers. I'm guessing that's probably me. If you guys might be even. It might be even on that one. Computers. I'm looking for computers. I don't see computers. Yep, it's no, actually. Computers. It's, it's the same. It's int. It's two. And neither one of you have trained it. I, no. I have not. So, okay, so he's going to give you the boost die, and you're going to roll for that, uh, yeah. Maggie. Uh, you are trying to route through there, so it is going to be um, uh, too difficult to die for this one. Okay. Um, I guess. It's a lot of advantage. Leave, before we leave Fitz all by himself with with uh, 420, um, I'm going to just let him know what we're doing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take Werbo, and we're going to try to figure out if we can help him navigate to a safer location. And I. Um, I, I, I like give uh, Werbo a look and we, we head over that yeah. way to, to the computer. Um, I guess I'm going to open the panel and I'm going to start looking at stuff and we'll see what I end up doing. Maybe I just break it. <laughs> awesome. So just to be clear again on the, the layout of the ship, like yeah. um, you're, you're literally kind of hollering down 15 feet down a hole. I mean, you're probably trying to like cover your mouth to make the sound go down where it's not getting too loud. So he can't exactly hear what you're you doing. You just see my there. hand, like as I'm working on things, you see a hand come up with like a thumbs up as I'm, like, mm -hmm. working on shit. All right. So you roll your, uh, hopefully you're a little bit more successful than he was with this one. Okay. You succeeded. Uh, you succeeded in getting the uh, navigation to the, so the, um, the navigation to start working, so, sorry, to wire it over there. So you do w route the power to it. Um, but at the same time that that happens, roll for me a perception check, just Jesse and, um, and Maggie. Any difficulty? Um, Yep, it'll be uh, one difficulty. Okay, and then perception. Oh god, where's my skills? Uh, After you, kiddo. It's my skill sheet. It would be. It's like halfway down. It's under. No, no, no. It just like disappeared off my screen. Like I, I know where it is. And I'll go. Uh, I have to. I'm gonna reopen it because it's. I just want to make sure everything's good. Everything's fine. My rolls are good. All right. Uh, deception. Deception is what we're doing? No, 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 no. Oh, perception. Oh, Two perception. perceptions. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm an idiot. Deceive no, the computers. Deceive them. My skills <laughs> section is not opening right. up. Oh, there Very we go. There right. we go. Oh, that's wow. amazing. Wow. Wow. That's such a good roll. Oh, oh damn, yeah. you guys. Wow. We it. Ooh, we high five, it. buddy. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. deceiving all the things. Cam five. So you guys, uh, you guys are listening, and you hear the guy say hey, uh, up there. So um, you, you, Maggie, hear the guy react almost immediately up there as you guys are you're working on it. And you're like, I got it. Like you're excited for a moment, and up there you hear the guy be like, uh, you hear him saying something kind of like loud and upset. Crendor, is our Crendor? Jesse, you actually hear him say, "What the hell is going on? Someone just uh, took over my terminal." Okay. Uh... <laughs> Um, before you react, one of the things, Maggie, even though you didn't hear everything that he said, uh, the language, that, sorry, he was speaking, of course, uh, the intergalactic basic, but he, um, his, the way he chose to use his words, the tone, the voice, you're able to figure out that his race, you can almost immediately figure out it was an Ugnaught, which are like the, uh, oh almost God, like Ugnaughts, yeah. Who let an Ugnaught pilot? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yep. Oh, what's so, rude? Oh, we're screwed. An Ugnaught. Okay. Yep. Ugnaught. <laughs> there, yeah, go ahead and look them up. They're ugly as hell. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> They're the guys who freeze Han Solo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The little tiny pig. Yeah, like if Bilbo Baggins is turned into like a hog. <laughs> <laughs> who let an Ugnaught pilot a shit? Oh, my God. Yep. So um, you hear him say that. I'm sorry, Jesse, you're going to react to that. Uh,. Yeah, Warbo just like turns and just looks over and is like, <laughs> <laughs> What should I interpret that as? What are you trying to say, Jess? Good question. What do you interpret it as? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I'm going to try to uh, find us um, a better location. 
that we can navigate to. Because <laughs> I don't know what Jesse's trying to say. She and I'm like, him. She's, she's like, oh, she's like, yeah. I'm like too, because I, I just got it to work, so now I'm like in it, right? Yep, 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 focus, gotcha. All right. All right, so um, um, Mathis, down below, why don't you roll me another uh, another check to get those shields online, because you took another hit. This hit was actually, so there are no shields on. The hit you guys took was crippling. Um, uh, there was, uh, you can tell by the alarms going off. Mathis specifically, you can tell by the alarms going off. You guys can hear the person up there uh, cussing and, and everything in his, in, uh, his own tongue, uh, swearing up a storm. There was a hole breach. Luckily, where the whole breach was is an area that contains um, like storage or like weapons, nothing where you guys currently are. And so you can imagine like little seals or whatever uh, shut down to make sure that none of your uh, breathable air goes out. But there is clearly a, an exterior hull breach in the ship now. A whole bunch of things go haywire. A bunch of wires start sparking and everything. And then, um, uh, Mathis, you roll the, the shields check and we'll see what happens. Okay. Same roll? Mm hmm. Holy shit! <laughs> That's literally these are the best rolls I've ever seen. I can't believe in any game ever. Oh my god, How dude! Is that possible? What the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> oh, the force is with you. The How is that possible? I don't know how anyone who uses you. You not only man. <laughs> guess what just happened right now. I think you just not only brought the shields back online, but also somehow seduced the Ugnaught, and now he's your companion. For life. <laughs> oh no! Your mitochlorians must be through the roof. <laughs> Get out! Leave! <laughs> All right, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! How? The hell? Holy shit, man! All right, it's well, a mechanic, man. He's um, that's what I. That's my only. Th that's, that's the thing is, like, thing take done. me away from machines, <laughs> and that's I'm done. Like, this is what I'm good at. Okay. All right. I this agree. is what this is testing the GM. All right, GM, what happens? Well, you know, as I said, you. Um, so the the these ships, uh, the fire spray typically only has uh, two areas that can be guarded by shields: uh, the fore and the aft. So the front of the ship and the back of the ship. They usually only have a shield of one and a shield of one, but you can play with those as you like. Uh, like that, right? Um, one and one or two and zero, whatever. Um, as I said, the shields were down. There was no energy for them. You found reserves to hopefully get one shield back online, but actually you realize that these, these ships aren't designed the best. There was supposed to be like this next gen model of ship that was, they kind of fell and didn't become this uh, amazing thing. You bypass an old flaw in the system uh, making it so the initial uh, ship's power is far greater than it was before. So its capacity to shield is, is much greater right now. You know that it's unstable. This isn't something that's going to last and could, could do long-term damage if you were to leave it for too long. But you bypass it and get those shields completely back online, reroute the power from the, uh, from the prison block and everything back online. And all the while, while you're doing this, you actually kind of have enough time to get the wires in there so that pulling the power from the, the prison block and leaving it here, you almost make it so that becomes significantly easier to do in the future because of how it is that you laid those wires out and how it is you rerouted it. You put like a control in there that you'd be able to access from a terminal later on once you finish kind of like setting it up. Um, so you get three shields up instead of just the maximum of two on the, the front of the ship. And even temporarily though, it's kind of like blinking in and out, uh, one shield to the back of the ship, making this thing extremely extremely protected at the moment. Uh, it is causing a huge draw from the ship. Before you guys can roll that astrogation check that you're going to do so, roll me one more perception check as you're listening to the guy upstairs. For me? Yeah, or for both of us? Both of you. You uh, guys can each roll it. Both successful. So um, both of you guys hearing, uh, listening to the guy upstairs, uh, you hear him say, after that huge blast and everything um, uh, hits, you're gonna be like, I, I lost control of the weapons. I, I, I lost control of the weapons. Shit, what am I gonna do? And, uh, and then like, as he's like starting to panic and cussing up a storm, all of a sudden, like his cussing just stops. And he's like, my shields are, this thing's gonna be broken. There's no way I have that much shields. And like a couple blasts, come right at the ship, like right at the glass area, uh, over by credit in front of you guys. You guys like reflexively kind of like flinch as the blasts come right where you are. And they are deflected, like easily deflected by the shields in the front of the ship. And this guy's like, all, all right, all right. 
and um, and he's kind of like trying to, to maneuver and kind of like figure out what's going on. You can see that the, the, the controls of the ship itself are now a bit clunky because of the damage he's taken. As he said, he currently doesn't have control of his weapons, uh, but his shields seem to be back online in a way that he is he doesn't believe is true. How do you two react to that? I'm still, I mean, my, my focus is on trying to get, uh, figure out a better, uh, like the faster location. So I'm not even paying attention. Yeah, so so you, you, you more or less are like, okay, things are good. I'm we're, just kind of like yep. doing the little dog ear thing where I'm like listening, but I'm also just focusing. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that, uh, I noticed that, uh, she doesn't seem too fussed. So I'm like, sort of looking around like, all right, well, nothing for me to do right now. Awesome. So um, uh, you, uh, Mathis, are welcome to roll a perception check as well, but you're going to have to roll that with three difficulty because of everything that's going on. Uh, okay. You most likely won't hear it. Oh, Crendor, you can too. Sorry, with three difficulty. Perception with three difficulty. All right. Uh, so you put three for the purple. Mm -hmm. Okay, neither one of you guys are here. What's going on? Um, you completely unawares. And that leads us to Maggie, make your astrogation check. And I assume, uh, Jesse, you're assisting her? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, that gives you a boost die. Is that one difficulty then still? Um, uh, because you're trying to get to somewhere uh, close by, as close as you can, it will be one difficulty, yes. Oh, no, your ship is heavily damaged, so it's actually going to be three difficulty right now due to the heavy damage on the ship. Oh, my God, this is going to go badly. All right, ready? Here we go. Yeah. Oh, hey, you know. Um, not bad. Was... So what ends up coming from this is you're not able to finish kind of like doing the, uh, working through the algorithms to, to find where it is that you can jump to. But the good news is you did find out that uh, where it was that you were going to jump to was straight into the, uh, the core planets over in Empire space. So you were like, oh, okay, I found out the mistake that I accidentally made before. Let me just kind of change that out. And you eliminated the problem you did beforehand and are definitely routing it to be a much closer uh, nearby thing, preferably a planet that is, um, that is uh, not going to be looked at very closely. Okay. Um, uh, this pilot is um, continuing to try to like maneuver and dodge. It doesn't seem like he is... Uh, interested at the moment in trying to uh, escape he's kind of like you hear him kind of like swearing up there and bashing at his controls and and like why don't i have control of astrogation why don't i have control of my weapons so what he's not he's basically here? what it sounds like he's not even trying to pilot right now he is trying to pilot and maneuver but at the same time like he's kind of like distractedly so instead of like sitting there and completely controlling it's almost like one of those like looking for your keys or or your cell phone that you dropped while being on the highway at 85 miles um, an hour you know actually I mean? just noticed that it only had one difficulty die should I read roll that? I don't know why it's not keeping it. Uh, d don't don't worry about it for now. Okay. You're good. Yep. I'll look. Uh, I'll look back to to four twenty and be like, "Do you didn't? Are you good with pilot? Can you pilot anything?" Roger, Roger. I can pilot anything. I, I nod. Like, go up there and do it for him. Roger, Roger. So I just I just go up there. You guys see uh, four twenty like. Up on the ladder, probably does that like the awkward head turn they do, like looks at you, looks back, <laughs> showing up. <laughs> um, I guess I noticed that. I'm like, where's he going? Right, I'm going to pilot the ship. <laughs> and as he says that, you hear <laughs> above, what the? As his head kind of like pokes up from around the corner. So you see the uh, Ugnot um, uh, sitting in the, the pilot seat. Uh, you can tell that he's a, kind of, been, the, the controls are, are, are sparking in some areas and he's kind of bashing at them. You can see like he's clearly stressed out. He's missing more hair than they usually do. And, uh, and he's kind of bashing at the thing and he looks over at you and he's like, uh, and he's just kind of like looking around and reaches I'm, for his I'm imagining you going up there and being like, do you need assistance? <laughs> <laughs> so, like you did with this. <laughs> so he reaches down for his blaster pistol, and as he reaches down for that, why don't we actually take our break and, uh, and oh come shit, back. okay, all right, taking our, our second break. We'll be back in five minutes. Don't go anywhere. It's going too fast. <laughs> <laughs>